We can't solve the problem of media bias because we don't want to. Hi everybody, my name is Greg Crable and this is my daily podcast, Something I Learned Yesterday, in which I take one issue from the world of publishing and try to explain it in about three or four minutes. I've seen a few articles recently about rebuilding trust in media, which sounds like a good idea. Polls show trust in media is very low, and in my opinion, the lack of trust is very richly deserved. Unfortunately, most of the conversation doesn't get to the root of the problem, which I'll try to in a minute. AI is the big story these days, and there have been some big mistakes around AI recently, so sometimes you might get the impression that if media can just fix the AI problem, that'll solve the trust problem, but of course that's not true. The trust problem is way deeper. But just to get the AI issue out of the way, the solution seems fairly simple. If you use generative AI, you should make that clear. I think that's all that needs to be said. The bigger issue with trust in media is that people think the media is lying to them to push an agenda. The sad fact is that's true. Not all the time, not in every story, but yes, it does happen far too often. I can't give you advice on the lying part except to stop lying, but there's one aspect, aspect of media bias that seems very easy to fix, and it fits in with a very popular word these days. That word is diversity. If you want to fix your media bias, Make sure your staff at all levels, your writers, your editors, your management, has people from different points of view. That will help eliminate blind spots. If you have all Democrats or all Republicans or all atheists or all Catholics, you're going to be biased. There's just no way around that. The example that sticks in my head about this is from years ago. As, as you probably know, there are dueling demonstrations on the National Mall over abortion. There's a pro-life rally and there's a pro-choice rally. Before the pro-life rally, the Washington Post had a tiny little mention on an inside page. Before the pro-choice rally, they had front page coverage, maps, advice on parking and how to use the metro, where to get lunch. It, it was incredible. It was like a guidebook. It's no mystery why there was such a discrepancy. The, po the pro-life position is simply not represented in the staff or management at the Post. So if I see an article on that topic in the Post, I know where it's coming from. But, okay, now we get to the real problem. The Post knows this. They're not stupid people. Despite whatever they claim for PR purposes, they know perfectly well that they lean left, just as Fox News knows perfectly well that they lean right. That's not an accident. It's a strategy. Media has discovered that people want to hear things that confirm their biases. So they pick a set of biases and they confirm them. There's no mystery here. It's not a problem that can be solved because it's a direct consequence of the media giving the market what they want, which is biased news coverage. We just have to come to terms with that. So that's my thought for today. Let me know what you think in the comments. And uh, if there's anything I can do to help you with your business, you'll see my contact information on the next screen. Thanks so much.